Hey guys and girl, thank you for joining me. So in this video we're going to be talking about the TBS Tracer and the TBS Crossfire and why I am switching all of my quads from TBS Crossfire to TBS Tracer. Um, so what is TBS Tracer? Let me just give you some brief specs on this particular unit. This particular unit. Um, so TBS, Team Black Sheep is a company, been around for a while, been creating products for the FPV market for a long time. The Crossfire came out probably about four or five years ago now, and this was a 900 megahertz control link that basically kind of inundated the control link community within the hobby. So everyone has pretty much switched to Crossfire because it enables you to have a reliable control link for your drone, where in a nutshell, you're able to fly further with the control link than you can with video, and that's really optimally what you want. You don't want to be flying away from yourself and be, you know, having perfect video and then all of a sudden your control link fails you. So that was really why Crossfire kind of took over because the 2.4 gigahertz systems in the standard controllers were fail safing with still good video. Obviously we're running a lot more power on the control, or I mean on the uh, video system than we are in the control links. Control links are typically locked at 100 milliwatts where Crossfire was 10 milliwatts all the way up to two watts. Um, and then you know our video transmitters are running 800 milliwatts. So anyways, why is TBS Tracer so good? It's a brand new product from Team Black Sheep. It's a 2.4 gigahertz system instead of a 900 megahertz system. So it's a higher frequency, the same frequency that's in your radio here. Um, but I'll get into why it's actually better than all of that other stuff, or maybe in my particular use case, better, because better is a relative term, depends on who's saying it. Um, but yeah, let me give you some specs on this and then we'll get into the differences and why you might use it and why I find it to be better than you know anything that I've tried, especially for me. So TBS Tracer, made by Team Black Sheep, USB-C on the front, got a little indicator light here, same kind of control features and uh, feature set that you're going to get with TBS Crossfire. So it's got uh, updatable firmware very easily through this USB-C port. Then you can update your receivers over the air through this control link rather than having to actually take the receiver out of the drone. So that's a super cool feature that was obviously uh, kind of pioneered by Crossfire, enabling you to update your receiver and your control link through wireless connection rather than having to take the receiver out, plug it in, and it's a pain in the butt. So anyways, that's a really cool feature. You can use it with the same exact Lewis scripts that you're using with your typical like Tyrannus here, so or whatever you're using that has Lewis scripts built into it because there isn't a screen on the back of this thing. So you plug this guy in and then you're able to go into here and adjust whatever you want. Say set the fail safe or bind or do whatever you need, whatever you need to do, you can do it within the uh, controller with the same exact Lewis scripts, the crossfire shot stuff that you would deal with crossfire itself. So there's no updating or doing anything weird like that. You just plug it in and it works, which is very, very cool. The next thing is, is Output power, you're going from 100 milliwatts up to, not gonna say, but it goes pretty high, uh, and it's not quite actually out yet as far as being able to output power change, but you can do it, uh, and that is going to be something that will come in the future. Um, the next thing is the price. So what is the price of this thing? Well, I know it sounds ridiculous. These are, I think the big units are like 189 or $200 if you want the Bluetooth unit. This unit itself, is $69. So it comes in multiple forms. It comes in the old school JR module. It comes in JR Lite, um, which can be used on the TBS Tango now. They have a JR module that plugs in the back for a, a light or the smaller module bay. So this is the old school, the original one that fits in the most older radios. It's kind of big um, where the light module comes. They're both $69. If you want receivers with it, because obviously you can't run crossfire receivers with uh, tracer uh, transmitter. So if you want the receivers, you can buy three receivers and the unit for $129 or $29 per receiver and $69 for a unit if you wanted to do that. So the receivers that you come or that, that you get are diversity receivers of the same size as the nano crossfire receivers. So they're super small. They're literally about the size of a fingernail. Um, and then their diversity, so they have two antennas on them so that you can orient the receiving antennas in two orientations so that you have optimum polarization all the time. Um, obviously one in horizontal and one in vertical. 
Uh, and then, you know, when the quad turns, you're always having one either vertical or horizontal, depending on how you have your transmitting antenna set up. And I'll talk more about that later when we get into antennas, because there is an antenna upgrade. Peter the Penetrator is back, a 5 dBi antenna that goes on the TBS Tracer for a 2.4 link, a little bit more reliability with a tiny bit of more dead spot, but honestly with 2.4 you're not really gonna see that big of a difference. Um, but you are gonna see a bigger difference with the higher gain antenna as far as range is concerned. So that in a nutshell is the TBS Tracer. But the main difference between TBS Tracer and Crossfire is the latency. So this is three milliseconds of latency versus Crossfire, which was already amazing at 14 milliseconds of latency. Most 2.4 systems in radios have between nine and 20 milliseconds of latency, depending on the radio company and depending on how quality their link is. Some of them are faster, but have suffer in range. Um, some of them are a little bit slower and have really good range. Uh, FR Sky has a pretty good link. Whether or not they abide by FCC rules, um, I can't say, but you know they have a pretty good link on 2.4, and it is in that realm of 12 milliseconds of latency, where Spectrum is somewhere around 9 or 11, but they have sometimes uh, range issues. But again, like not range issues specifically to Spectrum, but specifically to 2.4, um, and then you know whatever guidelines that they need to follow. Where this has a 100 milliwatt output power, diversity receivers, and the fact that it does 250 hertz refresh rate, where Crossfire does 150 hertz refresh rate, and then jumps down to 50, depending on how far you are away. In most cases, I'm flying in the 50 realm because I'm further away from myself than I probably should be as far as where I'm flying freestyle. So 250 hertz all the time, and three milliseconds of latency. So that is over four times faster than Crossfire at its fastest. So this at 150 hertz is 14 milliseconds. This at 250 hertz all the time, not changing, not going down to 15 milliseconds of latency or going down to 50 hertz. It's 250 hertz all the time, three milliseconds of latency all the time. From here to the quad, three milliseconds, doesn't matter. It has telemetry back so you can get all of your OSD information on here. If you want, you can have you know, RSSI, you can have uh, battery voltage, anything you want to come from the receiver to the drone, or I mean to the transmitter itself can be done the same way it would be done on Crossfire, except now it's at three milliseconds latency instead of 14 milliseconds of latency. So let's talk about the differences between the two more so in use case. So Crossfire, what it'll be used for is if you're going super, super long range, um, and honestly you just want no no sacrifices of long range or you know you just want the most reliable control link. Crossfire has proved itself over the years as being a super reliable control link and a lot of people swear by it. Now this is something that's kind of geared more towards freestyle, like super hardcore freestyle and racing. I would say even geared more towards racing because it's 2.4 um, and this enables more people to get up in the air. Um, at the same time where Crossfire you can be limited because there's only so many uh, frequencies to hop on at 900 megahertz you only have like 30 megahertz to hop on. So I think it's 900 to 935 or you know 868 to 900 megahertz roughly um, is what you can hop. So these frequencies, they're digital. They don't stay on one frequency like our video on analog where you have 5880 and that's the only one you can be on. And digital, it's hopping all over the place. And on 2.4 gigahertz, you have the range from 2.4 gig all the way up to 2.5 gig. So you have 100 megahertz to jump between. So you can hop all up in there. So the more hops you have, the more people you can have in the, in the air at the same time because they're all hopping and it's very unlikely that they will hop on each other at the same time. So that's why you have like Wi-Fi is on 2.4 and you can have so many different Wi-Fi things on at the same time. It's because they're, they're all hopping and they hardly ever hop on each other. And when they do, it's only for a split second and you don't even notice it. 2.4 is ideal for having a lot of people in the air at the same time and also you get more resolution because of a higher frequency. So let me give you an example. If you have a five gigahertz Wi-Fi in your house and you have a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which one's faster? Usually the five gigahertz Wi-Fi. However, if you go into another room that the router is not in, typically you get kicked off of your five gigahertz Wi-Fi and you get put back on at 2.4. Why is that? Well, five gigahertz is a higher frequency. It has more trouble penetrating through objects and just in general, like humidity, water content in the air, all of that stuff affects the higher frequencies. So that's why you have you know, less uh, reliability on a higher frequency. So 2.4 gigahertz as a control link is a higher frequency than 900 megahertz. But 
with it being a higher frequency, you have more resolution, more bandwidth to put more information on. So you get obviously a faster control link, but a more just the resolution of the control link feels better. And honestly, I just can't emphasize how good this feels. It's kind of something you almost have to try. You know, me saying, hey, this is four times faster than Crossfire, which was already fast, you know, that kind of has some weight to it. But when you feel it, it's it's incredible, honestly. Like, I'm, I'm not even saying anything because it's TBS and I'm affiliated with them. It's literally incredible. I have not felt anything like this ever, um, and I have switched all of my quads to it. Now, does it have its downsides? Sure. I'm sure in some instances where you're flying in an urban environment and there's a lot of Wi-Fi, it could potentially fail you where Crossfire wouldn't. But there are instances where Crossfire fails you. I have been certain places and there was just something on 900 megahertz in that area and I wasn't able to fly crossfire there. Well, reliably, I was able to fly it but not go far away, where a 2.4 might have worked in that particular scenario. So in some cases, obviously you have different receivers, So, but you might have a quad on crossfire and a quad on, on this if you're doing commercial gig or something and you wanna make sure that you can use the quad, whether or not you're using 900 or 2.4, you have both options. If you wanted to do that, then you do need both modules. If you have a TBS Tango, then you could run this on the outside and you could run the internal module for 900 megahertz if you wanted to, but you kind of get where I'm going. You have to switch the quads receivers if you want to run this. But in most cases, I find that 2.4 gigahertz just kind of works in general very well in most environments, especially where I live here in the Southeastern United States. Um, as far as penetration is concerned, like I said previously, with a higher frequency, you're not going to get as much penetration as you would on a lower frequency, like 5 gigahertz of Wi-Fi and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. But in this instance, 900 megahertz control link and 2.4 gigahertz, you get 3 milliseconds latency, 250 hertz all the time. And I have flown exactly like I've been flying on Crossfire. I haven't made any changes in my flying style or scared to go anywhere that I wouldn't go on Crossfire and it seems to be working exactly the way that Crossfire did at least for my particular use case and honestly it's gone a lot further and done a lot more things than I even thought maybe Crossfire would be able to do um, on 100 milliwatts obviously I'm 100 milliwatts here 100 milliwatts there so it's enabling me to basically fly to the limits of my video which is what you want you don't want to have a control link that can't fly to the limits of your video because honestly, if you're flying and you all of a sudden lose control link but you have perfect video, that's not a good scenario. You want to be able to fly where your video starts getting crappy and your control link is still good so that you can manipulate the quad back so that you have good video and you can make it back where if you have the vice versa and the quad falls out of the sky and you have perfect video, that doesn't do anybody any good. So this kind of fills in all of those gaps and enables me to go as far as I want to go as far as you know flying freestyle um, have a reliable link and have a four times faster link and more stick resolution. All of these things are benefits to me. The diversity receiver, the smaller antennas, obviously you're dealing with antennas here. Um, I think I might not have talked about this, but you can put a 5 dBi gain antenna on the transmitter itself and get even more range if you're looking for that, which I think everybody's looking for more range. So Peter the Penetrator, maybe anybody has noticed this antenna, which is my old 2.4 antenna that I use on my old TV or on my old uh, system when I use 2.4. This is a 5 dBi Wi-Fi antenna, basically, um, and yeah, gonna enable you to have a little bit more range with 2.4. So I've been flying with this just to see what the range was like. I use this now, and honestly, I had you know it, it got per it got great range on this. I'm just assuming, and based on some tests that I have done, it is getting better range on this but it's not necessarily 100% necessary. There's a lot of necessaries, but yeah, I just feel a little bit better having this higher gain antenna on because I can go further um, than I can with this. But again, like it's just all relative. It was working perfectly fine with the stock antenna. So yes, TBS Tracer, it's amazing. You got small antennas, you run diversity on the quad. I ended up running a little 3D printed mount here that enables me to get this vertical polarization and horizontal polarization like you would run on these Immortal T uh, mounts on the Apex. This is optimum polarization on the back of the quad and it's got a smaller antenna form factor. You're not gonna get chopping up your props in, or chopping your antennas and your props anymore. So there's a lot of benefits to 2.4 that I think people will uh, will notice. So. Anyways, if you have any questions or something that I didn't possibly mention, which I'm sure there are tons of things that I didn't mention in the video, this is the TBS Tracer. If you have any questions, 
please put them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them. And uh, thank you for watching. If you want to give me a like, that would be great. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. See ya. I'm sorry if I seem uninterested or